If there's one thing that doesn't quite translate into cinema properly, it is sport. You see, despite the theatricality and the drama inherent in its presentation, it's simply so bloody spontaneous it's near impossible to script accurately. The only element that does work on screen, though, is the fabled team talk, either pre, post or mid-match. The sight of a manager pacing around the dressing room trying to inspire his charges has led to some wonderful cinematic moments. Despite that though, the truth is often way better than the fiction and the most inspirational mid-game rallying cries aren't in Hollywood, they're in Liverpool or Leighton or Collyhurst. My name is Adam Cleary and these are the five most infamous half-time team talks. Number five, Phil Brown, Hull versus Manchester City. Most of the time, we don't actually know what goes on inside a dressing room because, well, we can't see through those walls. We're left to the leaked reports and autobiographies that come out after the fact, and even then, who knows if that's true. Offer up a quick prayer of thanks then to the god of both sunbeds and hair sets that Phil Brown once chose to dress down his entire Hull City team on the pitch next to the away fans when he found himself 4-0 down to Manchester City. A group of incredibly well-paid athletes sat on the actual ground like a bunch of naughty school children completely ignoring their try-hard teacher. But hey, but hey, but hey, ignore my cynicism though because this rousing speech inspired the Tigers to a 5-1 defeat. Saying that though, all totally worth it for Jimmy Bullard's goal celebration at the same stadium the following year when he recreated the telling off. Number four, Arsene Wenger, Arsenal versus Liverpool. When it comes to giving players the hairdryer treatment, or I don't know, buying a competent ball-winning central midfield player, Arsene Wenger is of the opinion that less, and sometimes never, is often more. Now, while his less than proactive stance has frustrated the life out of Arsenal fans over the years, blood, one time it paid immediate dividends was when finding themselves trailing to a single goal against Liverpool during the Invincible season, he didn't say a single word. We tend to look back on this season as one of unparalleled success for Arsenal, but you have to remember that in this exact moment they had just been battered in the FA Cup semi-final by Manchester United and had their Champions League dream shattered by Chelsea. Now facing a first league defeat of the season and giving their title rivals the first little chink in the armour for which to claw them back in, Wenger turned to Martin Keown to inspire the players. Yes, actually Martin Keown, human evolution's missing link, Martin Keown. It's never been fully revealed precisely what he said or what drawings he did on the changing room wall, but whatever it was, it stunned his teammates into a 40 reverse and went down in Invincible's folklore history. Number three, Jose Mourinho, Chelsea versus Man City. Hello there, my name is Adam Cleary and I'm still a massive, massive fan of the former Chelsea physio, Eva Conario. She's got nothing to do with this story, but I just don't really get a chance to mention that anymore. Dub day Mourinho Monday night masterclass by Sky Sports. Blah! Chelsea's 1-0 win at Manchester City in 2014 was your typical tight affair designed to swing a title race in his side's favour. But facing a City side that included Dzeko, Silva, Negredo and Yaya Torre back when Yaya Torre meant Yaya Torre, his side faced pressure from minute one but still held out for the win. When asked how he'd inspired his players to such heroic feats of defending, he admitted that he hadn't. The club's masseuse, Billy McCulloch, had actually given the team talks both before, during and after the game. Now, McCulloch, described by John Terry as the funniest man I've ever met, high praise, I'm sure, had apparently just screamed at them in Scottish. Mourinho himself said, and obviously I'm going to attempt the accent, he was screaming so much in Scottish, I didn't understand it. I'm serious. Blah, blah, blah. I didn't understand. But the players looked like they understood. It was fantastic. It's more Cartman off South Park, that isn't it? Number two, Rafa Benitez, Liverpool versus AC Milan. Hello there, my name is Adam Cleary and I'm still a really, really massive fan of Newcastle United's manager, Rafa Benitez. He has everything to do with this entry, but I still don't think I get to mention it enough. Of all the heroic second half comebacks possibly in all of sport, Liverpool coming back from 3-0 down in the Champions League final is arguably in the top one. They were dead and buried and then they weren't and then they won it. All right, so in case you've forgotten, Milan recognised early on that if they could isolate Steven Gerrard in centre midfield, they could take the absolute piss out of him. So they did, and then they did, and then they were 3-0 up. Now, recognising that he needed a far more intelligent footballer in the centre of the park, Benitez wanted to get Haman on at half-time. Rafa's solution was to substitute one of his fullbacks, Jimmy Traore, and go to a back three. Now, as he was trying to do that, and Traore was heading towards the showers, the physio told him that Steve Finnan, the other fullback, 
back was carrying an injury. What resulted then was Liverpool submitting substitute forms, first with 12 players on it, then with 10 players on it, and then finally with 11. The humour in this situation was apparently used by Benitez to wash away the misery that was descending over the Liverpool team in the dressing room. So with their tactics tweaked and their spirits lifted, he sent them back out there and the rest was history. Number one, John Sitton, Leighton Orient versus Blackpool. Here you go, lads, the most infamous halftime team talk in footballing history. It has been for over 20 years now, and it probably will be forever. Popularised by 1995 Channel 4 documentary Club for a Fiver, which documented Leighton Orient's near descent into total oblivion, John Sitton took his team in for halftime and a few minutes later was both a cult figure in British football and obviously never able to get a job again. Trailing Sam Allardyce's Blackpool, lol, remember him by a single goal. Sitton sacked defender Terry Howard on the spot, like literally, literally gave him his two weeks notice in the dressing room and then offered two other players out for a fight. I've, um, I've got the transcripts here and uh, yeah, sorry, ma'am. You, you little c when I tell you to do something and you, you fucking big c when I tell you to do something, do it. And if you come back at me, well, I'll f***ing sort right out right here, all right? And you can pair up if you like, and you can f***ing pick someone else to help you. And you can f***ing, you can f***ing bring your dinner. Because by the time I'm finished with you, you'll f***ing need it, all right? Orient went on to uh, heroically lose the game 1-0 and finish bottom of the league. Many years later, he revealed in his memoir, which he did admittedly publish himself, that the inspiration for this had come from the movie Colours, featuring Robert Duvall and Sean Penn. I've not seen it, but I bet it's not that good. So there you have it, the five most infamous halftime team talks in footballing history. While you're here, why not hit the subscribe button? Because let's face it, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Or watch one of the other two videos around nipple level. They're about the World Cup, and you like the World Cup, I'm willing to bet. But until next time, my name's been Adam Cleary. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.